Um, we're going to build some prototypes today uh, of a website, and we're going to go through the process that we described last time, where you take um, and create uh, an HTML page with the associated CSS, and then you um, then you um, once you have that down, and once you think that you have the common HTML down, you can clone that. And if you don't have the CSS exactly right, that's okay. All right, because remember, we're going to have the CSS in one file. So if we need to change it, we can just change it in that one file. We don't have to worry about making copies. But the HTML, we want to make sure we have as accurate as possible because once we start cloning it to the individual pages, then we have to go back and change all of those if we change uh, some of the common content. So let's pick a topic. Does anyone have a topic they want to do a website on? Mike, um, I don't mean to interrupt you. Uh, don't forget to do attendance. Okay. <laughs> How about you pass an attendance sheet around? Okay. All right. They would have an idea of what they'd like to do a website on. I saw someone was playing a game on the way in. I think it was you, Mr. Pease. Which game is it? It's actually a game I'm developing. A game you're developing? Oh, okay. Well, let's pick a video game we want to do. We want to do about. Let's do. A, let's do a. Let's do a. A. Video, let's do a website about the best video game in history. All right. What do you think that is? Um, okay, good choice, but no. <laughs> Another good choice, but no. But Tetris, of yeah. course, come on. Okay. All right, so let's think about what we want on our Tetris site. The story of Tetris is really fascinating, how it was developed and how it was really developed on really... Um, inadequate computers that the Soviet Union had back then. They, they were far behind us as far as technology. So the computer that it was originally developed on, the computers that it was originally developed on were really, really not very advanced at all. And just how the licensing went. At the time, um, Soviet Union was, you know, a communist country, and they didn't, like, understand how to, like, sell contracts in a capitalistic system. So, therefore... There was a lot of confusion about actually who owned the rights to Tetris, all these things. So the only reason I say that is because we're going to create a site about Tetris, and this is what my wireframe is going to look like. I'm going to have a banner. It says Tetris Fan Site. And um, we'll have some stuff here. Uh, we'll have navigation. And we'll just do a simple site with four pages on it. Home. History. Different versions. And strategy. This will be our footer. This will be uh, our content area. And this area will be different on every page. All right? These three areas here are in common. All right? So, they'll be in common. So, um, we want to get those down in the HTML right away. Our CSS, we want it to look like this. So, we kind of have an idea how to do this, all right? And I'm going to spend some effort to make it look good, but 
I'm not going to spend tons of effort. You know, we'll do some basic things and then we'll be on to the next step. All right, so keep in mind that that's our wireframe. That's what we're going to try to create. So I'm going to open up my editor. Now, we already know what the, or we should know, what those four sections are going to be represented by, which tags. What tags are those four main sections that I drew on the uh, wireframe going to be represented by? Remember the wireframe. And then we can have an article or a section, doesn't really matter, but we'll make it a section. So these are our four main sections of the page. That doesn't mean that on an individual page we won't have another section or something along those lines. And I forgot the nav. do something like um, Tetris is a trademark of the Tetris Corporation. Alright, something like that. Alright, um, let me look it up. I want to be accurate. Tetris Company. And we could put other information, who you contact and all that. On the top, I'm going to do, in the header, I'm going to do an H1, Tetris, a fan site. Again, what you want out of the banner is you want someone visiting this page to immediately know the purpose of this page. We don't want people, for example, to think that this is like the official Tetris page or something like that. We're, we want to indicate right off the bat what it is. So since this is a fan site, we're going to say it's a fan site. Our navigation. Our navigation is going to be in an unordered list. And remember, an unordered list is going to give us a bolded list. Now you might say to yourself, I don't want it to be in a bolded list. If you remember from the drawing, I want it to be horizontal laid out. Well, don't worry. That's exactly
exactly what CSS is for. CSS will allow us to have it display any way we want it to. All right? So, we can create the list because that's what a navigation is. It's a list of things. All right? And in this case, it's a list of links. That we want it to look different than that, it's still a list. We just want it to look a certain way. So it doesn't mean don't make it a list. It means make it look the way we want to via CSS. And it helps to know the names of our pages, so I will put in names. So ahref equals index.html. <coughs> All right, then we had history, versions, and strategy. Remember, right now we're developing a template. At some point, we're going to clone this template to make these individual pages. But right now, we're making a template that can be used for any of these pages. So, I'm just going to put in the section, I'm going to put Greek text. So, let me Google and get paragraph of Greek text. Get a couple paragraphs. Copy it. Put it in there. my paragraph tags around it. <coughs> and here's our page, only HTML. So I'm going to save it as an HTML file. I'm going to call it template. that we want, but it doesn't really look like the way we want it laid out. Sort of does, but sort of doesn't. All right. What we'll do now is we'll aim to take care of that by putting some CSS on this page. A um, couple things. First of all, if you notice, the way the drawing was, the text didn't go the entire way across the page, but the text went something like this. So we want something like in the middle of the page, like that. All right? So uh, I also drew a border around those uh, things. So we'll put a border around these things as well. All right? So that will be the first thing that we'll change. All right? We'll get it going that way. So I'm going to create a CSS file. So I'm going to go here and say new. And it's going to be a CSS file. I'll save it as main.css. And I'll put 
things that I want here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a style. I'm going to create a style rule for the four main sections. Header. Nav. Section. And footer. All right. I'm going to give each of these a width. What we're talking about today, the, the, the big topic that we're talking about today, relates to what is called the CSS box model. All right. So, like if you were to Google it, if you wanted, to, wanted more information about the topic today, it's, you know, you Google CSS box model. The CSS box model is this, all right? Look at our page. Notice the sections we have. All of the block tags you can think of as being a big box. Each block tag corresponds to a box, all right? And that box has some attributes. It has a width, it has a height, it has a margin, border, padding, a whole bunch of things associated with it. And a lot of creating a layout for a website deals with giving the boxes the properties that we want. So we don't want these going all the way across the screen, so we put in the property of width to make it go not quite all the way across the, the screen. So I'm going to start out by giving a width of 600 pixels to each of these. All right. Let's look at the page now. Oh, I have to put that CSS in my page. I forgot to do that. Link href equals main.css rel equals style sheet. Type equals text CSS. How do I know that? Because I've literally done this a million times. So I know all these things. Um, you know, I know all of them, that all, of, all the properties that you need to set on the style sheet. So what does this do? This says that this style sheet applies to this page. So they're separate now. The style sheet is in a different file than the HTML. So now when I view the page, notice how the only ones really long enough for it to matter were the paragraphs in here. So they no longer go all the way across the page. All right. All right. So let's go. And the next thing we want to do, I think we've done something with this before, something with um, the width. If not, that's how that works. I'm going to go and I'm going to center everything. And if you remember, how do you center, th center things? You give them a margin of zero pixels. It doesn't have to be zero, but I'm using zero in this case. And I say auto. Let's be sure we understand this. This is a, just to say margin is what's called a shorthand property. There's actually four margins for something. There's a margin top, there's a margin right, there's a margin bottom, and there's a margin left. And I can put those in individually. So I could do something like this, margin dash top. That should be a dash. Zero pixels. Margin right auto. 
margin bottom, zero pixels, margin left, auto. I could do that, and that is the same as this. Why is it the same as this? Because if I say margin and I don't put anything after it, if I don't put the dash top or dash right or dash bottom, what it does is it reads these numbers and applies them going clockwise. So in this case, I have two numbers, this one and this one. So we start at the top. So it uses the first number for the top. So the top would be zero pixels. The right then would be auto. And then it repeats them again. There's no more numbers on this list, so the bottom would be zero pixels, and the left would be auto. So this is the same thing as saying this. I usually just do this, though. Because once you understand how that works, it's easier, it's simpler to type that. All right? So now let's look at how that's done. Yes? Auto will center it. So in other words, auto means automatically set the margin. So in this case, I'm making it 60% of the page. So it takes up that space. If I say auto, it'll create the margin so that half that extra space is over here, half of it's over here. So if I save that and refresh, there it's centered. All right. So we're slowly getting to where we want to be with this. All right. Let's add a border to these things. All right. Border is another property that has a shorthand. Usually I say this, border, one pixel, solid, black. For example. But actually, that's a shorthand for border width one pixel, border style solid. And border color black. So for a lot of these properties in CSS, there's like a longer way to do it and a shorthand way to do it. It really doesn't matter which you use. Use whichever one makes more sense to you. But um, you should sort of know how the other way works, even if you don't use it. In this case, the browser is smart enough to know that one pixel must mean the width, right? One PX isn't a style for a border. It isn't a color for a border. Therefore, it must be the width. So the browser is smart enough to see one pixel and know one pixel must mean the width. Solid, that's, that's not a color. That's not a width. That's the style for the border. And then finally, black is a color. So it's not a width. It's not a style. It must be the color. So again, I usually use the shorthand for that, but you can also write out the full version. All right. And there we have a border around everything. All right. Not bad. All right. We're still not exactly where we want to be with this, all right? So we can make even more changes, all right? Um, for example, one thing that, that doesn't really look good is notice how the text goes right up to the border. The attribute that says the space from the border to the space where the text starts is called the padding. And again, you could say padding top, padding left, padding right, padding bottom. Or you can simply say padding, and it will apply to all of those. 
So if I say padding five pixels, it will put five pixels between the top and this paragraph, between the left in this paragraph, right in this paragraph, and so on. So I'm going to give each one of these a padding of five pixels. All right, makes it look a little better. Again, notice how the text is a little bit further out. I'll exaggerate and make it like 15 pixels. All right, that actually looks pretty good. All right. Now, if we take the total width of this, we said the width is 600. That's the width of the content area. To get the total width that this box takes up, we'd have to add the one pixel border on each side. So that'd be one on the right, one on the left. That would be two. We'd have to take the 15 padding on each side. So 15 and 15 is 30. So 32 plus the 600 of width. So the padding and the border and the margin like get added on to uh, get added on to the, the total of the width. All right. So that box is now 632 wide. Notice how I was careful to make each one of these sort of have the same uh, the same uh, dimensions, the same width, so that they um, line up correctly the way I wanted them to. Notice also I didn't put a height on any of these, all right? Um, you can put a height on them, but if you omit the height, guess what? The browser figures out what the height needs to be. So each of these, none of these have a height, yet the browser is smart enough to know, well, make the height big enough to contain everything that it contains. So typically you put a width in, but not a height. That's very, very common. Okay, so this isn't bad. But we can maybe do a little bit better, all right? We could do a little bit better. How would we bring down everything? So I want to take this and drop down the start of the header down here. How could we do that? Just bring this down so that there's a little bit of white space here, and then the header starts. The space between things is the margin. So right now, the header has a margin of zero pixels on the top. Well, if we put 20 pixels on the top, then that does exactly what we wanted. If we want to drop it down more, we could make 50 pixels on the top. But notice what happened. It also put the pixels on the bottom as well. Because remember, we have only two of those. So I could make it zero pixels auto. Top margin, right margin, left margin. I'm sorry. Top margin, right margin, bottom margin, left margin. All right. And there we go. All right. Not bad, not bad. Let's look to make this even better still. What about a background image, right? Tetris is fun. This site looks like it could be a site for a funeral home, right? Or for a new site or something like that. Absolutely nothing exciting about this at all. And remember the rule that the way your site looks should sort of match the tone of the site. So Tetris is a game, so this should look fun. It looks like a game. So let's look for a Tetris image. Alright. Let's look for a big Tetris image. There's some big ones. Let's, let's look for a real good one. Well, 
I'm going to spend the whole period looking for the image I want. I don't like that one. All right, let's go with let's go with this one. That's a pretty pretty good one. This photo is said to be in the public domain, which is good. So we don't have to worry about copyright with it. So let's go and save this image. Nope. Google Chrome does something goofy with the images. Let me open it up in Firefox. Yeah, there we go. I'm going to save it to the desktop as Tetris JPEG. So, I can make this a background image for my entire page if I wanted to. Want to do it for the entire page? Yeah, let's see how it looks. So I'm going to say body, background, actually background is one of those shortcut, uh, shortcut um, CSS attributes because you can say background image, background color, background a lot of things, but if you say background and say URL, tetris.jpg, then you know that it's going to be the background image. Okay, there we go. It looks great. One problem, you can't read it. All right? So, how are we going to fix that? We could change the color of the font. All right. Let's do that. The color of the font is color. So I could make it white. Still not real crazy about that. So what else could we do? Put a solid background color um, around <coughs> uh, for each of the elements of the page. So I could say background <coughs> white. What about whoops? What about black, Mike? I mean, since the Tetris background images has a black background itself, well, we can play around with that. We'll see which one we like. So we could do background white, background white, background white. So that's how it looks, like that. All right. Suggestion of making the background of all these white. I'm sorry, black. probably want to change the border too then because we can't see the border anymore.
Do you like that better, or do you like the white background better? Pardon me? The white background. White background? Okay, we'll go with that. Nice thing, though, about this is let's assume we were doing this for a client. All right? It would be very easy for us to make two versions of this page, one with a white background, one with a black background, and we could show it to the user and let them decide. All right? We wouldn't have to make an entire two different websites. We would simply make a copy of the website and change the CSS file. doesn't look like doesn't look the way that we want it to right if you remember on the board we had the navigation elements side by side and now because they're a list we have them stacked up on top of each other and they're bulleted all right so we can change that by changing the CSS remember it's still a list right so it should be in a list tag we just want that list to look different we just want the list to be oriented horizontally. So I'm going to do this, nav ul. We've never done that before in class, I don't think. No. What does nav ul mean? Yes? Uh, it means you want to apply something to anything that is an unordered list inside of navigation. Exactly. We want to apply this style rule to the unordered lists, but only unordered lists that are in the navigation. So if I had an unordered list somewhere else on the page, all right, um, then the style rule wouldn't apply to it. All right, I'll create an unordered list in a minute here, elsewhere on the page to demonstrate what I mean. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to say list style type. None. That gets rid of the bullet points. So we're no longer going to have the little bullet point next to it. I can also say list or nav li, so I can apply this to every li in the nav section. I can say display, and I'm going to say inline block. You have several choices for the display. Block and inline are the standard two. All right. Um, inline means it simply lines up with all the other elements. It will be in line with it. Block means they're going to be stacked on top of each other like block. Inline is sort of the best of both worlds. It will be in line, the display, yet you can still change some of the attributes like it were a block. Tag. So I can give it a width and I can give it a border. Because you can't give a width and a border. There are some attributes you can't give to inline tags. So this says, all right, the best of both worlds. We'll make it act like an inline tag, but you can still give all the block attributes to it. So now, if we look at this, our things are oriented horizontally. How do we put some space between them? Could you do a padding attribute for... We could do a padding. That would be one way to put space between them. What would be another way to put space between them? Padding would put space between the border and... Okay. All right, between the border and uh, where the text starts. Okay. It's not horizontal. No, it would be horizontal. Oh. We, could, we could do padding left or padding right. Okay. Okay, let's, let's do it. Let's say padding... dash left, 20px. So I put space in between them. If 
I do padding everything 20px, it pads it in all four directions. So I don't think I like that. So I could do padding dash left. I could also do margin left. If you did padding left, it's not like that's wrong. I think padding uh, margin's a little bit better because margin is meant to be the space between <laughs> elements. So we want to put space between these LIs, so a margin is probably a better way to do it. So now we have that. All right. Now. Fonts. Excuse me, thank you. Bless you. Thanks. This is a font. This is a real standard font, but not necessarily a great font. This is a pretty basic, straightforward font. Nothing horrible about it, but maybe we want to give a little bit different look to it. So we can choose among different fonts and apply different fonts to this page. All right? So, let's go and let's open up Word for a minute to look at some of the fonts that are available. In general terms, there's two main families, two main types of fonts, serif and sans serif. Arial is a sans serif font. Let me find a serif font. Georgia is a serif font. What's the difference between a serif and a sans serif? Can you tell from this example? Serif has uh, like pointy edges. Yeah, serif has these little thingies on the bottom of the letters. Accents, so, accents on the edges. Yeah, and those are uh, those are called serifs. All right. Whereas sans serif, sans is a French word meaning without. So sans serif means without serifs. All right. Which is a better font to use online? Sans serif. Sans serif. Sans right. serif. Certainly. No, go ahead. Sans serif is uh, good for like short lines of text, like titles and stuff. So I think it was in 121 they talked about it. And then uh, serif is good for like paragraphs and such because the the serifs help to help the eye to <coughs> that's true words the, together or something. That that's true if you're talking about print, maybe. Okay. Um, and maybe in a different context. Typically, in a web context, you will use sans serif for a lot of text, serif for a little text. Okay. Let's look at the Wall Street Journal's website. Notice that. And they're making a liar out of me because they're using serif for both. Oh, here's an example of they using serif for the headlines, sans serif for the body of things. Actually, that's a case. That's an ad, so maybe they treat that one differently. The bottom line is this should be done in a purposeful way. <laughs> So let's go in and let's add, let's just change the fonts just so that we're not using the same old boring Times New Roman that we did for the whole semester. So I'm going to say font family. And I'm going to give a list of fonts. Georgia. Cambria. Comma serif. Why do 
do I give a list of fonts? Why don't I just say one font? Why don't I say if I want to use the font Georgia on this page, why don't I just say the font Georgia? Because if some browsers can't necessarily support one, or if they have a hard time displaying it, they can use the second one, and if they have a hard time with that, they can use the general. Exactly. Um, with, uh, with fonts, keep in mind that you are developing for literally every computer in the world when you're doing a, a website. Potentially anyone could be visiting it. And you don't know what kind of machine they have. They might have a Mac, they might have a Linux machine, they might have a machine where they don't have certain fonts installed. All right? This is going to look, the way we're doing fonts here, is going to look for a particular font. And if it has it, if the, if the machine, if the, the user has it, it will use that font. If it doesn't, it will just go down the list. And it will pick the second font on the list. Finally, every browser has a generic serif font. All right? That's one thing that you can conclude. So if all else fails, you're saying, hey, I want this displayed in the serif font, and the browser will use the default for that particular user. So I can go and do that and hit refresh. And different font, I think that looks a little better than the basic boring Times New Roman. I can also go in and if I want the section to be sans serif, I can say font family Ariel Helvetica sans serif. And the font can be, for the body of it, can be in sans serif. I can also change the font size. All right? Maybe I want that banner really big. So I could put, well, the header, H1 in that header, I want the font size to be 3M. Now, what does an M mean? M means emphasis. So, 3M means three times as big as a normal font. Now, I'm just going to wrap this up and we'll revisit this a little bit on Tuesday, then we'll go to another example. Alright? So, let's say I'm happy with this as a template. Alright? I'm going to make sure I'm happy with everything in this section, this section, and this section because if I start cloning this and I decide I want to add another link or add something to the header uh, or whatever, then I have to go back and change that several places. So once I'm happy with that, I can go in and I can clone it. So I can... take my template and copy it and have my index. Copy it again and I have my history. Copy it again And I have versions. Copy again. And I have strategy. Now, I haven't gone in and made any changes to these. Uh, Monday we'll make maybe some simple changes to these. But notice, I have four pages and they all look consistent. Because of the process that I went through of cloning it. All right. These are different pages. You can see the URLs changing up there as I click on them. Now, a couple things we didn't address. One of the things we didn't address is changing the links. 
If you notice even when we change the color of the page to white, the link state is blue. The links are treated differently than the rest of the stuff on the page. So my, uh, Tuesday, we'll look at changing the color of the links. And then we'll go in and we'll play around with this a little bit more. And then we'll start creating other versions of this page. Again, which is pretty valuable if you're going to show a client. You can show the client uh, different versions and they can pick which CSS. And again, it's not like you're developing four different websites. You're simply developing four CSS files. Any questions about this? All right, we'll see you in lab.